My name is Mateusz and I would like to present some piece of code about uh, Kafka streams. I would like to show you actually how the Kafka streams work based on the Kafka architecture uh, and show you some kind of uh, Scala DSL for the Kafka streams as well. Uh, first question, it would be really easy for me. Are there any non-English, non-Polish, sorry, speakers uh, here? Okay, I know you, all right, all right, okay. So, unfortunately, I would have to be presenting in English. Uh, that's fine, okay. Uh, all right, so firstly, the agenda. I have some questions for you uh, right now. How many of you guys use Kafka uh, in production or in your side project here? All right, that's fine. How many of you guys use Kafka Streams? That's fine, that's above the number I was hoping for. All right, uh, that's cool. So firstly, I will still talk about Kafka a little bit. I will introduce uh, Kafka Basics, Kafka Architecture, and then I will forward to the Kafka Streams API, and I will show you how the Kafka Streams work underneath the covers. And then finally, the part everybody's looking for, so the live coding, I'll try to show you how, uh, how to write an application that is both easily developable uh, on the developer side, actually, and easily scalable on the production side. Uh, firstly, the disclaimer, I have a pretty annoying cough, so that doesn't mean I'm dying, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, but if for any reasons I will cough too much, then please uh, feel free to call the 911 emergency. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's, let's move forward to the Kafka. Let's talk about Kafka first. So <clears throat> maybe you're, uh, you're wondering why the Kafka sign here is red. Uh, I was looking for a, for a way to show you that Kafka is fast and yeah, so there is no better way to show that something's fast than coloring to, to the red, so yeah, Kafka's blazing fast. Uh, what is actually an Apache Kafka? So initially, it was conceived as a messaging queue, uh, and it's nothing bad in thinking that Apache Kafka is just a, a message queue uh, with key value messages, uh, but it's actually something more than this. It's a distributed commit log. When you think about it, uh, the topics where the messages are produced are uh, divided into partitions and the uh, messages uh, landing to on, the, on the specific partitions are like uh, messages logs. Uh, we can think about it as a distributed event streaming platform because it's nothing more than producers sending messages to the Kafka brokers which the messages are consumed uh, and can be consumed in, the, in a streaming fashion. So we can think about Kafka as a messaging system because it both uh, uh, enable user to, to do some kind of queuing and pops up. We can think about it as a storage system. Uh, for example, we can perform event sourcing on the Kafka and it's, it's fine. It's high performance, it has low latency and enables uh, scalability and replication. But as well, it's a streaming platform and I will talk about it today. Again, Kafka basics. Uh, let's talk about first, uh, let's talk about uh, how the topic works in a Kafka. So as I already said, topic is divided into, into partitions and it's good to notice in the first place that the, the number of partitions is actually the number of uh, scalability when talking about a, a Kafka topic from the consumer side. Uh, why? I'll talk about it on the next slide. Uh, let's, let's think about the architecture of the Kafka topic. Here we can see a topic that is divided into four partitions and there, are, there is a term of a consumer group in Kafka. This is basically a set of consumers belonging to the same, same group, actually, because it's consumer group. So we have some kind of uh, laws in a Kafka, how, how the consuming uh, the messages works. So firstly, any partition is consumed by one and only one member of the same consumer group. Uh, so as we can see here, uh, as we can see here, this partition is consumed only by the, by the C1 consumer 
of the consumer group A and C3 consumer in the consumer group B. And that's, that how, that's how it works with every partition of, the, of this specific topic, of all, actually of all topics. I knew I would hit that, okay, that's fine. Uh, another law is an, any partition is consumed by all of the present uh, consumer groups so that uh, we have, uh, uh, we know it that every partition is gonna be uh, consumed by by every consumer group that is subscribed to the to the specific topic. So, what are the implications of such an architecture? Uh, every record published to a topic is delivered to all of the subscribed consumer groups. I have already told told that. But each consumer, when we have situation where each consumer is in a uh, in a single consumer group, so we have effectively one consumer group for all the consumers. Uh, we have effective load balancing over all of the consumers. And if we have each consumer in its own consumer group, so that we have effectively, not number of the consumer groups is equal to the number of the consumers, we have effective broadcast over all, all of the consumers. So those are the basics. And it's pretty important to understand how the, how the partitions and consumer groups concepts work in a Kafka to actually understand how the Kafka Streams API works. So if, if there are any questions about this part of the Kafka architecture, uh, please do it now. Please, please uh, feel free to, uh, to ask because this was a pretty important part and I'm just looking at the time I need to, uh, to be fast to, to, to get to the actually interesting part. But yeah, please free to, to ask. If, if any part of this is not understandable, please, please free to interrupt me. Okay, so let's move to the Kafka Streams API, actually. What is Kafka Streams? Kafka Streams is a very lightweight Java library. Kafka Streams is a thing that wants to be inside of your application, actually. That it's a simple jar, it is, it's a lightweight jar that you include in your project, and you have all of the consumers and producers, Kafka consumers and Kafka producers, integrated into a streaming fashion. You can, you can consume messages from the Kafka process them, transform them actually, and produce them into another Kafka topic in a streaming fashion. Uh, what is good about Kafka Streams? No, there is no separate cluster required. Uh, if you compare this to Spark, to Apache Spark or Apache Flink, uh, those solutions are based entirely on the separate cluster, separate uh, computational cluster. Here, Kafka Streams require no separate cluster. Only cluster that is required is actually an Apache Kafka cluster. Uh, this is called centered, and I will try to prove it in the next following slides. Uh, actually, inside of your application, you, when you include this, this library, this jar, uh, you have a Scala API where you define your own processing topology. Uh, there are no, no dependencies, no other dependencies than, than the Kafka Streams uh, library. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, it's elastic, it's highly scalable, fault tolerant, just like we would expect it to be, being a quite modern streaming processing platform. You can deploy it to containers, virtual machines, bare metal cloud, it's everything's fine. Uh, you would deploy it as, in a, in a, in a way that you deploy your, your own application, the production. It's equally viable, that's actually one disclaimer here. Uh, I would like to recommend this solution, this Kafka Streams, to the small and medium use cases because that's the way, that's the place that, that Kafka streams really shine. Because you can easily define a topology and I will try to show it in the next slides. You can easily define the topology, scale it pretty easily and deploy it on the production without all of the, uh, of the big streaming platform, um, uh, how to say, the complexity, let's say complexity, all right. <coughs> and it comes with all the Kafka goodies uh, partitional, partition scalability, Kafka security, or if you wish, exactly one semantics. Uh, that's all supported. All right, so let's enter the DSL. Uh, we have stateless and stateful transformations in the, in the Kafka Streams API. Uh, yeah, we, all, we, are already, we have already seen the stateless operators in, uh, in a Kafka streaming uh, libraries. That's that's not a uh, that's not a nothing, that's nothing new. But 
actually what, what Kafka Streams uh, DSL introduced are the stateful operations, and I will try to focus on it. So for the stateless operators, we have filter, map, flat map for each. That's everything, uh, that's, that's the, the thing you know. For the stateful, however, we have count, reduce, aggregate. Actually, the two, two, first one, two, two, two first operators are redundant because you can do everything with just an aggregate, uh, which is uh, the most generic one. But then we have uh, join operator and window operators. Uh, those are specifically interesting because uh, when you process your, um, your, your data, that is uh, uh, your, your streaming data, you actually sometimes want to, uh, to process it in some kind of time windows. Like let's say you need to produce and aggregate your data annually. That's fine, you can, uh, you can aggregate it in the uh, one hour time windows and that's fine as well. You can also aggregate it on the, uh, not tumbling, but hopping windows. I will, I will move to the subjects on the, on the next, sli next slides and talk about it more. <coughs> Sorry. All right. So let's start with something easy. We have stateless operators uh, that transfer one message into zero or more messages. We have uh, easy operators like map, branch, that transfer one message into one message. We have filter that you can easily uh, just m make a condition and, and don't uh, put your message from the input to the output. And we have flat map where we can uh, transform one message into multiple messages. Here's the example. Like we could end it here and we could I could just show you this slide and say, okay, those are the few lines of code I was promising. That, that works, that you can deploy on the production. Not really, uh, I will show you all the, uh, all the boilerplate uh, in my code. I have prepared some kind of uh, stop to, to create a simple topology that can be actually deployed to the production, I believe. Uh, all right, so what we have here is uh, Streams Builder, that's the class uh, that uh, defines a start for your topology. Uh, then we have uh, a stream. I will, I will talk about the streams and tables in uh, terms of Kafka Streams later, but you can, uh, you can think about the stream as an ever-ending stream of events. That's, that should be pretty clear for you. Uh, then we have uh, information that those messages are gonna have the key of type string and the value of type string. Uh, no serialization is done here. And this uh, example actually does some more <coughs> operators and we end up with uh, having a simple word count uh, sent to the streams word count out output uh, topic. Yeah, so few lines of code and we already have some kind of topology that can we deploy on the production. Uh, when we talk about the operators, not only stateful but stateless, we need to think about repartitioning. Uh, Kafka Streams introduced this concept, which means that uh, we have to we have to remember that the keys inside of inside of any message that is processed uh, through the Kafka uh, is actually uh, pointing to a specific partition. We have, uh, we have an option to, in producer to define specifically on what partition uh, the message uh, would land, but uh, when no partition is, uh, is defined, uh, we have uh, assurance that, that every partition with the same key will land on the same partition of the, of the specific topic. So when we call the operator that may change the key of the transform message, uh, that may actually cause the creation of an intermediate repartition topic to enable fault tolerance. And uh, in this way, we can easily, uh, after our application crashes, we can easily move our state of the uh, stream procession, pr uh, stream, pro uh, stream processing uh, to the place we, we have just before the, the crash. Uh, all right, so operate, there are operators indicating no key change, and that's the feature Kafka Streams implement. Uh, we can easily say that we don't want to, to, to change the key, and that's uh, equivalent, the map values is actually equivalent of the map that says we, uh, we indicate no key change, and there is gonna be created, there, there aren't gonna be created any intermediate repartition uh, topics on Kafka. Uh, all right, so, 
The first thing we come up with uh, when, we, uh, when we are looking deeper into Kafka Streams API are dual is duality of streams and tables. And that's actually quite easy to, to understand. Uh, when we, s we do stream processing, we usually need both streams and databases. And we can see a table as some kind of intermediate database that comes up with the Kafka Streams uh, API. Uh, actually, we can see a stream as a change log of a table, and we can see a table as a snapshot of the latest value for each key in the stream. Uh, I will show it here on, the, on this picture. Here we can see some kind of state. Uh, the, key of the, the key of the messages are simply the names, and the values are some kind of aggregated numbers. Let's say those are going to be counts or something like this. So we can see we have a pretty much table over here on the left, and then we have a stream, a change log of this table that we can easily move left to the right and recreate the table that, was gonna, that, was, that we started with uh, so, so that we can see the streams and tables are actually connected. We can see uh, that uh, we can move from table to stream and then back to the, to the table as well. So we can say that K stream, because that's how it's uh, that, that's what the, is the name of the, of the stream in Kafka Streams. is an abstraction of a record stream, and KTable is an abstraction of a changelog stream. Right? So uh, I believe many of you use Kafka. You know what is log compaction probably. If you use it in, in, in production, then uh, you know what are the retention of the topics. This is pretty important, I believe. Uh, for those of you who, who doesn't, who don't, uh, there is some kind of concept of topic, uh, of topic retention. If we think about Kafka as a database, as, as, a, as a message source, let's say, data source, we can, uh, we can configure the uh, max retention time of a topic. And after time, we have no, no guarantee that the message will, be, will still be on this topic. Uh, so the log compaction is a cool feature that uh, enables the user to actually uh, have the guarantee that at least one message of, this, of, of the specific key is going to be on this, on this topic forever. Uh, and if we talk about K streams and K tables, then for K tables it is pretty much encouraged because we use K tables in Kafka streams as a, a pretty much as a table lookups for joins. We call the topics that stand behind the K tables as a configuration topics. And for K stream, log compaction is not quite what we are looking for because uh, the log compaction may actually remove important data. And you know, if we have a, ch if we have a stream of records, then actually we don't care about the, the freshest record. When you have table of, of, of records, of aggregated records, the latest value is actually what we are looking for. Okay, so I've... Uh, I've talked about the table lookup. So how it's performed in the Kafka streams. So it's performed uh, with, a, with a joins operator. Uh, let's say we have a problem. We want to process records only with the specific key. So it's pretty easy, straightforward solution. We have a filter operator. We can do it easily. Why, we, why do we need joins? OK, so what if the key is dynamically defined? So what if the key is defined on another topic in Kafka? And we want to some kind of join the, those topics. We want to consume the message on the different topic and then some kind of join it with, uh, with our stream of, of never-ending events and, uh, and take that value from the, from the other configurational topic. So that's, that's where the join shines. Uh, as I said, let's imagine that we have a stream main record structure. Uh, time is up. Uh, person ID. Uh, it's a key, value is some kind of important data, and other configuration topic, as I said, as a value contains some kind of boolean that let us, uh, let's say, uh, enrich the data, right? So we can, we, can we can think about this boolean as another type, and we can enrich the data uh, of our stream to, with a data on the configuration topic. Uh, there are numerous operators. We can, we can do a case stream to k-table join. That was the example before. Sorry, uh, but also we can do k table to k table joins. We can think about it as a as a uh, as an inner join, as it says, or left join or outer join. I think you know these operators. When we have inner join, we are we we are sure that when the record is absent on the configuration topic, let's say on the right side, right, uh, the, then the re result would be on the 
downstream processor only when the, the both, both records with the same key exist. With left join, we have no guarantee. Like, if, if on the right side there is no record, then we have a record produced with a null value. And it's pretty much the same with outer join, but you know it's symmetrical, so, uh, so yeah. We, we, can also pre, uh, we can also perform a case stream to case stream join, but it's, it only works with a window data. We define uh, some kind of uh, length duration of the window where the, where the records are joined with another stream. All right, so we have some kind of uh, aggregation oper operators I already told you uh, about, uh, about uh, I, I think, count, reduce, and aggregate. So it, what it basically does, it transforms a uh, number of grouped messages into one message. Uh, it's a key-based operation. Record needs to be grouped, right? So, so we have to watch out for the repartitioning as well because uh, as I already told you, if we group not by key, by, but by any other value that, is, that could be present in a message, we cause a repartitioning topic. And it pretty much, uh, it would, uh, let's say, make the topology longer. Like, uh, there isn't time overhead to process all the topology if we introduce uh, intermediate topics. So we, we should watch about it. Uh, the aggregation may be both windowed and non-windowed. And we move to the windowing, which is uh, especially interesting in this case. We have different types of windows. Uh, it is tumbling window, hopping window. Uh, that's for the window aggregates. As I already told you, we sometimes want to aggregate the data in some kind of time windows. Uh, there is a sliding window. That's for the window joins on the case stream and case stream join operator I was, I was talking before. And there are session windows. That's some, it's, it's designed for the uh, aggregation of the user sessions, like uh, sometimes you have a situation where the user logs into the system, sends some kind of sends a set of events, and we want to define a, an aggregation for those sequence of, of user events. All right, so let's, let's think about the simplest uh, type of a window. Here in this example, we have a five minute length tumbling window. There is no unit on this, uh, on this picture, but we can imagine those uh, those units are minutes in the stream time. So yeah, we can see that data records come. If, this, is the, this is the input stream, and data are aggregated by the key. The color, the same color means the same key. And the records are grouped by the key and then aggregated in a time window. So this is only an aggregation. We can, uh, we can define our, our own operator. We can implement it. What do we do with those grouped events? Uh, in, in those windows. Another type of window is a hopping window. And when we talk about uh, window definition, we talk about actually about three things. First one is window duration. Second one is window interval. And as we can see here, interval is very small. It would be like uh, one fifth of uh, window duration. And the third parameter is actually grace period so that we can accept late events when we process those streams. Sometimes we have situation where, where the event is not delivered on time. And the grace period is actually the, uh, the length, the, the duration of the window plus an additional time to accept those late events. And this is the session window I was talking before. As we can see, uh, we can imagine a situation that user logs here, logs in here, and then there are some kind of events during his session. And this is another example where the Five minute, there is, there is configured a five minute inactivity gap. And as we can see here, the five minute gap was, uh, was finished so that this event starts a new session window. Okay, so if we talk about time, there are three types of time in terms of stream processing. This is event time, ingestion time, and processing time. And uh, I would like only to point out that pretty much always the event time is what you're looking for. And it is not default in Kafka streams. Uh, you usually have to define a custom timestamp extractor that extracts, extracts the timestamp from the, from the value because usually you have, you have data where the timestamp is hidden inside of value. And the timestamp in Kafka record is, is, usually, uh, is usually, on, on, it's usually ingestion time or, or even processing time. So we have, to, we have to watch out for that. 
Uh, ingestion time is, is, when, is the time stop when event was produced to Kafka. So that's the time when Kafka accepted it. And processing time is the, is the uh, time stop when the event was pro actually processed, right? Uh, I've already told about this slide, so we have window duration, interval, and grace period for the late events. Uh, there is a thing that we have to work out when we, when we program uh, topologies uh, in Kafka Stream. So when exactly are the windowing result, results produced? I've told you about the window duration, I've told you about the window interval, and the grace period. So, well, if, every, if, if anybody wonder why till uh, the Kafka 2.1.0 probably, uh, events weren't produced on the, in the end of the window. I wonder too, I don't know. But there were uh, two options only to choose. It was to produce a partial aggregate result on after every update. And that was when the cache, the aggregate cache it was disabled. And that was when the earliest of the commit interval milliseconds or max buff bytes buffering uh, hit. And uh, yeah, the first, the first uh, situation does actually nothing because you end up with the same number of events after aggregating than it was before, than it was in the, on, the, on the input. And the second solution is actually quite tricky because you don't really know when the aggregate will be produced. Like, you can configure the commit interval. That's actually, I, I've, 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 I think I've never said, the commit interval is the time uh, between the uh, subsequent uh, commits of the of the message of the batches uh, of messages, uh, yeah, and the max bytes buffering, as you can think, is is just the cache size for the for the aggregate, and those are global parameters, and you cannot just configure it for the specific part of the topology, like you have to configure it globally. So it's not very scalable solution. It's not very elegant, but those are where the only two. Uh, two ways of configuring the, the windowing results, uh, uh, the time where, when the windowing results were produced. Yeah, as you can see, we end up either with uh, the same number of, of uh, partial aggregate results, or we have like something, something not yes, right? So something was not cool here. So the Kafka 210 introduced a suppress operator, and finally we can we can uh, produce uh, the results after the grace period. Uh, I, think, I think this as a, as a major feature. Mm, uh, I have uh, an experience with Kafka Streams since the 1.0 probably version. And uh, I think about it as, a, as the biggest feature that came up with the, with the Kafka uh, in the last year. Right, so, so you, can have, you can see here that uh, we have some kind of events which are grouped by key, then windowed, we define the window duration, we define the grace period, and then we count it and we say, we suppress it, right? So, so the result will be final. The result will be sent after the, after the, sorry, after the window has finished. It's, it's pretty big feature, I, I think. Uh, okay, so let's move to the, to, to the Kafka streams, how it works under the cover. How much time do I have? Oh, okay. Only if you want to, oh, yeah. to hear more. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's move to the threading model. How, the, how actually the Kafka streams scale, how it's, how it's performed the third time, would be the last one, uh, perform underneath the cover. So we have three concepts, three, three uh, let's say, three aspects of the threading model. First one is stream partition. And for those of you who know Kafka, it just points to the Kafka topic partition. It's pretty much the same. It's one to one. Uh, the second one is a stream task. And it's a, actually the smallest logical unit of a parallelism model. If we think about the Kafka stream topology, we can think about it as, uh, as a task that would be a, a smallest part of the topology that, is, that, that we can uh, assign to the, to the thread to process. And a streaming thread is just a thread, and it may execute on many stream tasks. Uh, so, and it's a configurable, so we can configure it in, uh, in, uh, inside of your application. Here we have, oh, that, that isn't an animation, you have to believe me. Something is not right here. And let's just leave it like this. All right, so we have here uh, an example that of an application that uh, have some kind of 
topology, you can imagine that there, there are numerous processing operators here, right? The, the logic is blowing your mind. But then this is the smallest piece of, uh, sm smallest unit of parallelism here, right? The partition zero from the Kafka topic A is, uh, th the messages from the partition zero are flowing through the topology here to the Kafka topic C, and then this is some kind of other topology. And those are two different tasks. As, as you can see here, both of these tasks are assigned to the, to the same stream thread, and that would be because probably uh, a developer of, the, of this topology didn't change the default number of stream threads and end up with the single stream thread processing the application. Uh, right, so how do the stateful operations work underneath the cover? Well, we have a concept that's called stores. Uh, those are used to store and query data for stateful operations. Uh, cool feature is they are actually automatically recoverable from changelog topics because if you declare any, as any stateful operation uh, that has uh, some kind of aggregating logic behind it, you actually want to define a changelog topic that will follow the partial results of this aggregation so that when your application crashes, it's just automatically, the state of the store is automatically recoverable from the changelog topic. Uh, you have some implementations to choose. Default is RocksDB. That's an embedded database that comes up with the Kafka streams. When you include your jar, you have just RocksDB there in your project. You have to accept it or just resign it and have an in-memory hash map uh, uh, and use an in-memory hash map uh, and not RocksDB. You can also just include everything, anything you can implement here. You can even use, uh, let's say, some kind of other database, like in a more database like Redis. You can actually implement it, but it's not uh, by default uh, to use. All right, so we are on Krakow Scala user group here, and I'm just talking about Kafka. And Kafka and no Scala code is, uh, is there. So I would like to move a little bit to the, to the developer part. We have some, ki with some kind of two options here for testing the Kafka Streams topology that you have defined the fourth time. Uh, the first one is topology test driver. It comes up with, uh, Kafka comes with Kafka dependencies and is constantly updated. It has very rich API. Like I didn't find any, uh, any way that I couldn't test a topology and I had, you have to believe me, I had some many I had many uh, really stupid ideas to test, and the topology test driver has never failed in this case. But unfortunately, it's written in Java, as every interface uh, in Kafka. So yeah, there is some kind of uh, mock streams solution for this. That's a really lightweight scala wrapper for the topology test driver, but it lacks some features. Although if you use your, if you don't use processor API, which is very low level Kafka Streams API, you would end up with uh, having all the feature set fulfilled by the mock streams Scala. And it's very elegant solution. I have, to, I have to tell you, only thing you do is have your mock streams builder here and define a topology, which you can easily move to the companion object of your aggregate of your stream. So you just call a method from the companion object. I will show you just in a moment uh, how you can do this. Uh, then you can define the input, which is just a sequence of events. You can see the, those tuples are just key value pairs and, and the expected output, right? So if you call output on this, on this builder, you have your uh, result. The mock streams actually mocks Kafka, right? The mock, the, it mocks Kafka streams. So, it is part of a library. You don't need any Kafka, external Kafka uh, solution, external Kafka cluster setup to, to, use, to use this, to write this unit test. Finally, we are moving to the code. Let's end up the presentation here. Oh my goodness. Pray for the internet. I've prepared uh, a little a little stop for this presentation, uh, and I will try to tell you some some uh, something about the already established code. 
I know I have promised a few lines of code, and here we are ending up with uh, some kind of 150 uh, lines of code already written to, to show you guys how to, how to use this API. But believe me, those are just the stop. Like, this is, this is something you, would, uh, you wouldn't do, for example, in, a, in a, your... Uh, Okay. Uh, to już jest presentation mode. Okay. Oh, nothing changed really. Uh, one second. Yeah. All right. Could be better, right? Uh, okay, I think that's fine. So yeah, let's start with the example stream. Now actually, let's start with the, with the launcher. Let's start. Right. Let's start uh, where the program actually starts. So I've defined a little bit of Kafka environment to just create the topics easily. To uh, Every time I launch the application, the topics are cleared. Every time I launch the application, uh, the topics are set up from the beginning. And this is just a helper. You wouldn't do it in the, in the production, right? You wouldn't just clean up the topics every time you launch your application. No, this is just for developer mode only. And there are some feature flags that should I clear stay, should I run producer, a mocked producer actually, I have I've written some kind of producer that is uh, sending messages to the Kafka to actually have a stream of events, right? Uh, should run stream, obviously true. Uh, those are the settings you'd like to, to have when you start with your uh, Kafka Streams application. First one is bootstrap servers, that's obviously pointing out to the Kafka cluster, You're you have to have to actually run the Kafka streams. Second is a, a local state directory uh, that would point out to the path where the, where the actual state is, where the, where the stores uh, have, have their states <coughs> for the stateful aggregations. Next is stream threads, right? We uh, already, already defined the four threads, four partitions for the topic, uh, replication factor. Sorry, I have Kafka cluster with only one node. Input topic, output topic, that's, that's just for the uh, definition of the stream. Next, we, we create a, an example stream. I will show you in a, just a second how the stream is constructed. And those are just, uh, uh, just the helpers to clean up Kafka topics before the application started. All right, I don't know what's funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, I know what's funny, the, the few lines of code, right? 41 lines of code. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, uh, that's a good point, right. Uh, and finally, we do the most important comment here, so that's the stream start. We, we actually start the stream of uh, processing the events. Let's move to the actual, okay, just a second, I will show you how the producer is done. There is no Kafka streams in this class. Unfortunately, Kafka streams doesn't really support producing messages to the Kafka topics. Like, it, it consumes the messages from the Kafka topics and produces the messages to the Kafka topics. But if you want to produce the messages from outside of the, of the Kafka to the Kafka topics and then consume the messages from Kafka to an external source, you actually need uh, another library. Uh, recommended are Kafka Connect or there are many like uh, Kafka streaming uh, connectors like Monix Kafka or Alpaca Kafka, you are free to use it. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately I have written the producer, the mock producer, uh, the Kafka mock producer uh, in an old fashioned way <coughs> with just, uh, where is it? Producer, Kafka producer, yeah. That's the Kafka clients API. All right, so what would do we do here? We have uh, 1,000 entities sending constantly events uh, with some kind of randomly 
uniformly distributions fashion I don't know uh, yeah those those values are just are just random uh, and we send those events to the input topic uh, continually uh, that's the that's the input event producer that's not the part of your topology the part that the topology itself is defined in a example stream here and as you can see here it's empty so I will try to code something hopefully I won't fail and uh, and we could end the presentation all happy uh, right so maybe let's run the stream first uh, I'll make sure the zookeeper and uh, Kafka are working That's fine. You can think, right? Ah, something. Uh, Kafka is working. That's fine. Uh, all right. So let's move to the launcher. Let's run it. Probably would fail, right? I don't really know what's happening in this presentation mode, but something launched. All right, so let's try to see if something's working here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Kafka tool. Kafka tool is a pretty nice tool, but very frustrating, of course. Uh, that enables user to, to read the data from the Kafka topics. We would need to head to the my Kafka installation path. Where they have all Kafka. Mm. That would be Kafka console console consumer. Yeah, and we need to define the bootstrap server that will be localhost and we need to define a a, a topic. Okay. It's minus minus, right? Minus minus topic. I don't really remember the topic. That would be Kafka streams input. Thanks God. It's so short. All right. As we can see, the event producer is actually working. We have some kind of uh, uh, messages on the input. Do we have any kind of message on the output? That's the question. And the answer is we don't have it because the topology is not defined yet. Right, can I actually move it a little bit down? Yeah, that's fine. Let's head to the stream. All right, so we have a stream of input events. Input event is a model, it's just a case class. Uh, it's a case class that contains a value of type long. If you ask what is a HasGen codec, it's a, a serialization library uh, from the AFO system commons package. It's not the subject of this presentation, but it, you, you, you have to believe me, it actually helps me in uh, serializing uh, re really well. Like I can, s maybe if we have time, I will show you how the, how the gen codec actually works inside. Probably no, okay. Uh, you just have to believe me, it's only for the serialization, right? Other types of serialization that are recommended for the Kafka, if you don't want to move to our commons, Alpha system commons, would be probably Avro, or you can just uh, use any JSON serialization library or binary serialization, whatever you want. Mm. The fun thing is I, I can actually just type extends has gen codec, and I already know how to serialize this case class. and deserialize it so it's pretty convenient way uh, what did I wanted to do all right let's let's move back maybe no. all right so we have a filter that filters all of the events we certainly do not want to have that in our topology let's try let's say to count all the all the events by the key all right 
our events have the uh, our Kafka console consumer didn't show the key, but you have to believe me, the keys are from the zero to 1,000. I already showed you, I, I believe this. So we want to just group by the key, okay. And just count it. Unfortunately, uh, the count, as you can see here, doesn't uh, return, doesn't return the K stream. It returns the K table because as you can think about it, uh, aggregated results are in the form of a table. Uh, only the latest value of the key is, uh, is interesting. So that's, that's the way it works. But as, as I already said, the tables and streams are dual. So, we, oh my goodness, so we can say to stream, and unfortunately something is not working. Uh, I don't really know what, all right, the parentheses were just unnecessary. And we can send the data to the output topic. So now we, we, have write, uh, we have written a simple code that just counts the incoming events from the input topic and, and sends the result of the count to the output topic. That's the simplest you can get here. Let's see if it works. Uh, right, so we have the launcher. I think it's, yeah, it's running. Let's run it again. <coughs> Received unknown topic or partition. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just end this up and run it again. The Kafka streams output is where this these messages should should land. Keep your fingers crossed because if if the events won't come, that would be the end of this presentation. And we have just crashed our terminal. What is going on? Okay. Okay. Some kind of messages are. Uh, are processed here and sent here to this topic. The console consumer is quite tricky. Mm. But I would like still to point out uh, how this, the, te the unit test works. I already told you about the, uh, the mock streams. So we head out to the stream, example stream test, uh, stop I've written. Let's just stop it here. You have to believe me, those, those messages are landing in the topic. That's my bad, really, I, I excuse, I, I'm really ashamed that I haven't prepared a, a proper, mm, let's say Kafka tool, let's say GUI, to, to see actually those, those events on the output topic. But we can actually, I can show it to you uh, how, at the same time, how this process, how the, uh, topology, the topology definition works and how the unit test for the topology testing works. So here, as you remember, there is a mock streams builder. We define the topology. And as I said, you can move your stream topology to the companion object. And in this way, what's going on? Okay. Uh, in this way, you have your topology definition easily testable for the for the test. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. So we define the topology here. We define the input and output topic because that's how I declare the method. Uh, you can say, can I close it? All right. You can say that the input is going to be an input event uh, for the test entity with a 42 value, and we check the output. It shouldn't be now index sec empty. Let's try to run this test. Oppa. Something is working. Mm. 
I think I will end the presentation mode here. It disappeared, okay, one more time. Yeah, that's a fail, but we actually wanted it to fail, right? So, so we've end up with uh, some kind of weird value here. Okay, that's the that's the reason why there were no events or there were empty actually events in my console. I don't really know why. Let's head to the topology. Probably we screw something up. Group by key count to stream. String and long, okay, okay. Um, first, yeah, first, first, the, the serializer here is is wrong, and then, right, let's try it. Now oh, that's better. All right, so. There was there was only one event for the uh, test key here. Let's make it more. Now we should have uh, we should have actually in the seku, let's say of the uh, of the tuple of test right and four. That would be the way. No. Oh, okay. That's the that's the thing that should be pointed out, as I already told you. Uh, uh, there are some kind of concept of partial aggregate results. So if we count it here, uh, not only the first, the, the last, the last event would be the the, la the 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 only aggregate result, but all of the partial uh, partial aggregate results would be present here on the output. Uh, the mock streams library presents some kind of output table concept, which only uh, presents uh, the, the the latest one, the latest result, and it's not still not working. Okay, because that output table actually returns a map, not index seku. Uh, so we just after a few, um, we have map test for that should be fine. That should finally pass, and we could write some kind of more uh, interesting piece of code. Yes, finally working, all right. All right, we had, let's head to the stream topology and let's try to have those events grouped by key, right? But now we want them to be windowed. We want them to, have to be in, uh, in a window uh, so that we need to introduce not session window, but oh my God but just a window, right? This is an abstract class. We would like to have a time window. Of the size, let's say one second, advanced, oh, let's, let's go with the subsequent, so that would be one second, and grace is irrelevant. So let's have one second length. Uh, this would be with the one second interval as well. And the grace period, let's say we do not accept late events here. Maintain duration. That actually should be deprecated, I believe. All right, let's, let's say it has maintained duration one second as well. So now, when we call count operator, it's not actually a never ending aggregate. The, the results produced here would be the result of the, uh, of the partial windows. Uh, something is missing here. Right, the key has changed because now the key is not a string. Underneath the covers is a string enriched with the window timestamp, let's say. That's, that is actually probably, as I checked in the internals, this is the start of the window. 
um, mixed with the end of this uh, end of the window, I believe. Uh, so we can say that we do not really uh, we don't really want the key to be windowed string, right? So after the count, we may introduce a partition topic, unfortunately, but we may say that we map. Uh, oh, let's all right, because we have k table. Uh, so after the transformation to the stream, we can map it so that the uh, so that the key would be just a mm, would be just the key, the string, without the the actual value. All right. Now the serializations work pretty, pretty nice, and when we run it, we can see. Uh, okay. Tom Windows does not. Oh, that's quite nice. That should be a. Ah, that's private. Okay. Time Windows off. All right. And then there's there's a. Advanced by, all right. All right, that's why something was not working. The constructor is irrelevant here. Let's just say it's of 1000. Oh, that's deprecated. Okay, that's deprecated because uh, there's a duration introduced in the latest Kafka versions. So we can say it's just a duration Java duration probably of seconds, one second. Let's advance it by advance by uh, duration of one second, and I think that's it. Let's try to run our test. The test would be more uh, complex because now. It passed, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> to actually test this code, OK, because I've sent uh, four events uh, with pretty much the same timestamp. As I already told you about the time semantics, uh, uh, mock streams automatically uh, assigns a 0L timestamp, so that would be a zero timestamp, all those four events landed in the same window. But if we, however, uh, wanted to test uh, windowing, that would be another method that would be input with time. And now it actually accepts records that not only contains key value, but also long. So if we can, uh, we've defined a one second windows. So if we go with zero L here, all right, because the, the type is, is wrong, okay. Oh, something's not, yes. Right, so if we say we want a timestamp as well, and let's head to the, let's say this is 1L, 2, and this one would be 6,000, because why not? Mm, okay, so the output table here would be a map, be map. The output table doesn't work actually here, unfortunately. We have to call output. I have to call output to, to show you uh, to show you the the grouped events. Because output table just creates a map and the the previous window result would be overridden by the newest one, so we would see just the one event here. Right, so it wouldn't be obviously test four. It would be uh, test one, test two, test three, and test one because that the last one, the last record landed in the in the following window. And those are the basics. I really don't want to uh, to make you bored of this API, and I think you are already really bored. So we can end up it here, or I could just write some more pieces of of, of lines of code that could end up in a production, uh, but maybe let's just end up it here, right? Because 
it's already eight o'clock. If you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Sorry, one more time. It's about light applications. You said that it's perfectly fitful to small and medium, but what about ah, the large applications? All right, okay, that's a good question. Uh, so, as I already uh, showed you, you can easily define a number of threads inside of the helper, the Kafka settings, right? I've put some uh, some helper here, but when you start a stream. You just uh, configure the property with the number of string threads. And those map to the actual number of string threads in, on your production, right? So you can imagine a situation where there are like three instances of your application, of this application. You can easily deploy this to the, to the jar and run the jar, run the three of, this, of those jars in your production. So you end up with three consumers mixed up with producers actually because there, is, there are just those streams that runs on a configured number of stream threads. So you can say that uh, you deploy one application, one jar, with uh, consuming uh, eight threads for the streaming and you actually can deploy uh, a number of those applications on your production and this would scale, right? Because it, it's, it's based on the, pro, on, the parti on the topic partitions, on the Kafka topic partitions. And all it does, it just consumes a batch of those partitions by, the, by one instance of your application. That's where the, the sca scalability comes when, when, you, when you head to the, to, the, uh, to the production, right? You cannot see it here. It's just a boring code, pieces of code, like you've already seen this. This is like pretty much the same DSL like in Spark, but the difference is you only work in, on, the, on the Kafka cluster here. There is no additional cluster. And the scalability comes with the Kafka topic partitions concept. I don't know if it fits your question. Uh, it fits my question, but I have another question. Okay. What about clustering? Clustering. Uh, how we can cluster our applications? All right. Especially, for example, we have a, we have a topic splitted by, for example, 2,000. Sorry? Samza. 2,000 partitions. Oh, 2,000 partitions. Yeah, because uh, uh -huh. we can't consume in its uh, own single machine. Right. So that's that's perfectly fine. If you have 2,000 partitions, that's a really big number for your cluster. But if you have 2,000 partitions for your topic, you can easily just scale it like, you can configure, let's say, uh, 2,000 by eight, that's gonna, be, uh, 1, 000, that's gonna be 250 instances of your application that can be deployed on, the, on, on your nodes, on, on your production, right? If you, if you have like eight streams configured here, you can deploy if you have like a supercomputer that that's have a processor with like 2000 cores that's fine too you can you can define you use 2000 of threads in your in your application and just deploy one application one instance of your application but if you have a like containerized environment and you have those applications closed inside of a docker containers right you have you can you can say that uh, that one container is going to consume only eight eight stream threads and you can easily scale those containers to the 250 number so that those appli this application is actually going to consume uh, all of those 2,000 partitions of the topic, as you said. Yeah, so my question was about how, how you can configure your stages. I, I want to use this, uh, to run this as a cluster. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it possible to run this as a cluster, or I need to make some half stages? Uh, I think you're missing the fact that this actually doesn't have to be cannot be a cluster. It's all the guarantees for scaling this come from the fact that there are consumer groups and the instances of this stream don't really communicate with each other in any other way than committing the uh, processing of the message. There's no cluster like J groups or ACA cluster involved in this. Yeah, uh, crucial problem here is... Uh so it's basically like consuming a queue. It's, it's that kind of scalability. And you're only it's limited by the number of partitions. Mm -hmm. It's actually, if you're, if you're running a cluster, you have to say, say that this application is consuming this part, this, uh, uh, this application is consuming this. Uh, OK, this I part, understand now your partitions, mm -hmm. even, even if they are running on the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, consumer group. So we are actually uh, asking about the 
uh, scalability in terms of consuming different type, different parts of the topology, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, that's not really comes up with the Kafka stream solution. Like you have to uh, partition those topics, right? As you said, you have to have uh, as, as big number of partitions as you would like to have your applications to be scalable, right? The, every instance of your application would consume all of the topology that is defined inside of your application. But the scalability comes with the number of partition of the topic, right? So there, there's gonna be a batch of partitions that is gonna be consumed by one instance of your application and it's gonna be divided yeah. by the other instances. Like, if you think about it, you can easily just divide the, the topologies into different types of, of your applications. Yeah, but it's not very elegant, but you can do it. You can implement it like that and it will also scale, right? You're not generating a cluster, right? Let you, you can, yeah. you, you can, mm -hmm. You're going to implement some kind of cluster, yes. but it's not uh, actually a cluster. So it's, yes. That's why mm -hmm. it does not uh, actually fit some scenarios in large, uh, in large uh, application. It actually does. I would argue that it actually fits a large large application because you, do, you actually don't need sometimes the, the cluster you're, you're asking for, right? If you think about it, if you... Some of okay, which involve you to run it in uh, in, in cluster, and uh, especially for Spark uh, itself, mm -hmm. you're running in uh, mm -hmm. cluster, right, yes. and you know all of this uh, how your data is spread it uh, along the cluster and how you merge uh, all of this data. Yes, I, I can ag I, I can agree on that. Some like. Of the, mm -hmm. of like the Kafka streams is not a solution for everything, right? If you need a, if you need a standalone, uh, different cluster than the Kafka cluster, you are, you end up with uh, solutions like Apache Spark or Apache Flink. The Kafka streams doesn't provide an, ec an external yeah. cluster. Yeah? This, this was my question. Yeah. Are there any other questions? 